Welcome everyone to Screams After Midnight. I am Peter and joining me as always is Tim. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. It's not a vampire movie. <laughs> 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 but, it, the day when you get those vampire movies till like January time, you're making a reference to something they're not going to see for months. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure some of the audience going to time travel. <laughs> this is a horror movie podcast. We get together, we've watched the movie, we talk about it. It's just quite that simple. Uh, this episode is going to be about La Llorona, the new film from this year that is a Shudder exclusive. Mm. And it, this was the winner of a vote, one of our patron votes. We have the regular patron vote at $5, but we have also what we call the Echoes by Morning vote at the $10 tier, where new films that are you know released in VOD, streaming services, that kind of thing, kind of go into the list and our patrons at that tier and up get to vote between them and it's kind of a rolling vote where the films keep coming back and list but every month there's some that are eliminated uh, but La Llorona mm-hmm. won um and this is one actually where the vote's going to keep going even when Tim's away and I'm going to be doing some of them <laughs> on my own I know shocking right mm-hmm. uh to keep up with some of the new films that are coming out but uh but this is La Llorona this is the the obviously we just did the well, I'd say just. It was like the start of the year. But we did The Curse of La Llorona, which was the... And we both liked a lot. And then, so, <laughs> it was interesting <laughs> to... <laughs> yes, the, the Curse of La Llorona, which at the last minute they went, oh, by the way, this is a Conjuring Universe movie. <laughs> just in case anyone hadn't noticed. Yeah, so that... Wait, that that other one was last year, right? I, yeah, the, I think yeah. it was late last year. So we did it at the start of this year. Oh, okay. All right. I, I, uh, well, I, I, I think. Just, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to remember if it made our worst of list. I mean, it had to have, right? Oh, like, it, it must have done. It must okay. have done. <laughs> if not oversight on our part, <laughs> unless we, unless we didn't watch it in time before we did the list, maybe. But no, I th- it must have been. Uh, I'm yeah. just, uh, I'm, I'm looking up when it came out. Uh, it came. Maybe we did do it last year, because it came out, like, uh, <clears throat> mid to early last year. Maybe I'm just off by a year. Maybe we did it early last year. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. We did, no, we didn't do it in theatres, though. We definitely did it later. No, no, no. Yeah, we yeah. watched it, it, it. Yeah, it came out, like, March, April mm-hmm. last year. So, yeah. yeah it definitely okay. made our worst of us. There's no way it didn't. Come okay. on. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> it was terrible. So, naturally, I was very excited to go into another yet Lally Verona movie. Uh, <laughs> you know, despite the fact that this, of course, is foreign language, it's in Spanish, and mm-hmm. it's uh, got a very different take on it. It's, it's not just doing the traditional story of the weeping woman. It's not doing the beat-for-beat the beat thing. Um, the premise of this one is that it focuses on a family where the, the sort of the, the patriarch, the, 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 the grandfather, he is a uh, uh, basically an ex-general an ex-dictator uh, could he be an ex-dictator maybe not but you know what i mean he's been tried for war crimes for what he did in guatemala um in the early 80s and that's kind of the framing device for what's going on but he's kind of aging and the film i, I think it's quite notable that all of the other members of the family are all female it's just, you know it's his wife his daughter his granddaughter uh even the the, the head servant is you know, a woman, like, it's all about how all the women in his life are, are kind of affected by his past and what who he is and what he's done. Um, and then, of course, you have the new maid who appears uh, a little bit into the film, which is a little bit silent and a little bit suspiciously creepy. And, you know, maybe mm-hmm. this is kind of where the, the weeping woman kind of comes into the into the story. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's a very different take on, on things, and it's got a very heavy drama focus uh on it you know, it's, it's not just like jump scares and oh there's something spooky ah she's coming for your kids kind of mm-hmm. thing um i i think focus you know having the central character who's kind of the the the, the I guess, yeah villains i guess is kind of the right term but having that mm-hmm. be this aging man who is like mm-hmm. being tried for war crimes from decades ago and mm-hmm. i think that's very interesting because he doesn't really have i mean he has a daughter but he doesn't have any children anymore you know he's not got like kids himself where they're they're young mm-hmm. enough to be the because typically you have these stories, or maybe I'm just going off the cuss a lot you're on here, but you have the, the main character usually is concerned for their kid, for the, for their young child who is mm-hmm. going to be kidnapped or taken or or, or whatever. And take so, it. <laughs> yes, taken. Uh, so <laughs> I think it's interesting that the, the central character here is someone who doesn't have someone of that age. This is someone who is is very different situation. So right at the start of the movie, just from the get-go, I'm like, okay, this is kind of a weirder... 
premise for this story and i think mm-hmm. that probably at least made me go oh i'm a bit more intrigued now i guess at least because i mm-hmm. have no idea what it's going to do with this now uh but yeah that's the, that's the basic premise we'll start spoiler free of course as we always do we'll mm-hmm. get, get into uh spoilers after some warnings in the middle do not worries mm-hmm. um so tim who is currently trying to deal with his cat who has been trying to sabotage things in the background is... It always turns the printer on, <laughs> walks on the printer, and then I don't know what's going on with it. Uh, Continue. <laughs> well, I was done. I was about to ask what you thought of the film, Tim. Mm. I, I hated this. Um, <laughs> yeah, the uh, <laughs> the no. So I, I knew going in that this was going to be yeah, like a, a different take, and that it was going to be um like more of a like like I, I wasn't really expecting a horror movie like i thought this was gonna be you know because like i read the description and like saw some other people talking about it so i was like okay yeah i you know I, I figured this is gonna be a more of a drama with a few horror elements here so it, it's not like i was expecting like you know a bunch of ghosts and scary moments and you know all this stuff uh but i was expecting like stuff to happen you know like interesting stuff to happen Ooh. and instead this movie was so goddamn boring i was like pulling my hair out it was like torturous <laughs> to watch this movie because it is just so goddamn uh boring and slow and i mean uh, i'll give it credit i do think it looks very pretty the cinematography is very great um you know there, there's lots of really good looking shots um you know, performances seem really well. And, uh, you know, it, it is an interesting idea. Like, you know, you were saying before focusing on, you know, this, uh, older man and, you know, the fact that it's like, a you know, dictator accused of like war crimes, uh, you know, that instantly does, you know, it's kind of set it apart and make it a little more interesting than like, you know, it's hard not to compare it to the really shitty U S <laughs> La Llorona movie, but you know, that was just so like generic and, typical hollywood stuff that like yeah that that one's really bad so it is at least cool that this is a little different and interesting and setting it apart but again i just was so goddamn bored watching this i i thought it was painfully slow (laughs) but just to clarify though you're still saying this is better than the uh the crystal iorona yes yeah (laughs) Yeah, okay just to make that clear (laughs) yeah at the very like uh you know i mean again i i don't want to come off and saying like oh this is a terrible movie it, it sucks the people that made it don't know what they're doing like again they you know had an idea for a movie that they wanted to do and you know that it, it it has more weight and is more interesting than you know the typical generic hollywood one that we got um i mean that's painful to watch as well but in a different way but yeah again i i don't think uh i just don't think it was really entertaining to watch at all I wasn't expecting such a hot, spicy take, Tim. I was, <laughs> I was expecting it to come in hot with the "I hate this." Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was quite such uh, a, a you know a fervor. Um, I quite liked it. Mm-hmm. Of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's not like a, it's not flawless. It's not a complete home run. Mm-hmm. I do think it loses a bit of steam maybe in the last third when it kind of veers into like more supernatural territory where with seemingly without much of a build-up to it which i thought was a bit odd um i i was kind of digging the film though for the most part mm-hmm. and i, I kind of like the points that it makes at the end and kind of approaching it as a character piece where the horror mm-hmm. is there but the horror is very much real world horror it's the real world horror of the, the atrocities that happened and the the the, the myth of la Llorona is kind of just like layered on top and not even like too overtly it's just it's, it's there mm-hmm. to an extent and there is definitely a supernatural element it's just there's, there's, it's not like ambiguous in that sense but uh the film deals with a lot of like slow really methodical oh, moments yeah. <laughs> with with 10 sequences and i was into those scenes I, yeah. I i did not think they were bored i actually thought the direction mm-hmm. was what made the film for me there's, there's some good moments in performances there's some good moments in the in the script mm-hmm. but it was the the way it handled just simple little moments where the camera would slowly track out it does that a few times but and then by contrast yeah, it's called when, the whole movie <laughs> and then, and then by contrast when it wouldn't do that uh mm-hmm. 
Uh, you know, even just a setting that you've got this this rich family of this dictator hiding in their you know big house. I don't know if it's quite a mansion, but it's a you know very big house, and there's like a there's, you know there's protests going on outside because like they're they're protesting him and the, the trial that's like that he's you know he's 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 is in the middle of right now, and so there's this constant noise of a crowd outside chanting, singing. Uh, you know, there's, there's security guards and riot police outside constantly. It's kind of an interesting premise for for a film. And again, everything kind of boils back to they're all in this situation because of who he is and what he's done in his past um, and how each of them deal and come to terms with what he may or may not have done. Um, so, I mean, we'll get into that, a, a bit that in a bit more detail in spoilers, but um, I thought this was very effective. It's definitely you know, not... Yeah, well, <laughs> you know what I think? I think you love dictators. <laughs> Shut up. I think that's what what's going on here. <laughs> I, I, Shut up. I, I was way more. I just thought. I, I I thought it was a really smart little film that knew what it was doing, had something to say, and it was exploring how this awful man had had affected the lives of everyone around him, and the horror of that. Uh, and the horror of that catching up to him, which is then represented mm. in the supernatural myth of La Llorona. Mm. All right. <laughs> I didn't feel it was compelling at all. I just, it was like <laughs> just watching time drag on <laughs> for me. It was, ugh, it was, yeah. Um, no, it's super boring. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> That's all I got to say. <laughs> I love how you pause there for a second as if you're going to come up with some new point. And you thought, no, I'm just going to say it was super boring again. <laughs> it sucks. Um, all right. I mean, okay, mm-hmm. fine. Clearly, it didn't work for, for everyone. Mm-hmm. But uh, for those of us out there, uh, mm-hmm. how do I put this delicately? Not to insult him. For those of <laughs> us out there with half a brain, that's that. Yeah, I like that one. Half a brain. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm kidding, Timmy. I'm kidding. I'm trying. I'm trying to prod at you for comedy you a, sake. Hey, I, I mean, it sounds like you're saying I have a full brain and you have half a brain. Is that? <laughs> well, no. It's more for people out there who have at least half a brain, suggesting that you have less than half a brain. Mm. Okay. I mean, if that's what you say, <laughs> that is what I say. How dare you? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I, in all seriousness, no, though, uh, like, it's, it, it's always a little tough, um, kind of argue, arguing it because, yeah, like, it's, you, you know, like, when a movie, because at least if it's, you know, again, I'm not saying it's, like, you know, poorly made in the sense that, like, oh, the acting's bad and, like, you know, there's tons of cheap generic stuff in it, like, you know, there's nothing like that to complain about, which it always, it, when something is just kind of, you know, boring, um, you know, there, there's, there's really not as much. Subjective, uh, subjective, your honor. <laughs> but I mean, I, I'm just saying like, you know, if I feel something is like boring, that it's, you know, there isn't really much else to kind of say about it, you know? I mean, to put, to uh, put a spin, I think, I think what you're trying to say here is that for, forgetting what your actual critique is here is that it's boring <laughs> is that right. this is a film where you're basically saying it doesn't work for you and you found a slog to get through uh sure. but you're not actually you can't actually sit there and argue that you think it's bad because it's clearly doing what right. it's supposed to be doing it's trying you know it's, it's a tra- trying to achieve a certain feel and it's doing that for the most part um it's sure. just not working for you uh, which i think is mm-hmm. different from say i don't know the boy for example where okay. you come in here telling me it's good and i'm like no it's trash it's actual trash well that's uh, actually compelling and has you know stuff happening oh, and the characters grow throughout it so I, I would say that uh yeah the boy yorona is definitely <laughs> much better <laughs> than this one. also do you know what occurred to me halfway through watching this i don't know why but the, uh... <laughs> that there's another half to go <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> that you can sing, you can sing "La Llorona" to the tune of uh, uh, "My Sharona. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> La Llorona. <laughs> I don't know why that popped out of my head. Um, I get that, <laughs> but, but it, it occurred to me. Um, but no. not like uh, again though, like the the one one big positive that i will uh give the movie again though to, to reiterate is that i do think it is uh, a very good looking movie like the you know cinematography is great like the director obviously knows how to you know like 
frame a shot and stuff but like you know i think there was really good looking like haunting scenes at moments um so I, again that's probably the biggest compliment that i can give it is that i at least thought it was like a very pretty movie the director of set frame a shot put that in the box <laughs> <laughs> Timmy v screams after midnight put it in the box <laughs> uh yeah no i know I, I didn't think it looked uh great I, or more specifically i thought the, the the flow of the edits and the direction looked great i i, I do love a nice mm. long take uh, I'm, mm. I'm, I'm very fond of it and you have to have the good actors to actually make that work because if they're not then you're just going to expose all their weaknesses but when you have <laughs> actors who can sit and can just have a conversation and then let that draw you in um mm. with some great little visual things like early on in the film when we were first introduced to the dictator and he's in like a meeting with like other people that he's been been tried alongside with, and I guess is the lawyer who's explaining to them, mm. look, show up wearing you know a dark suit, but not a black suit, and make sure you've got mm. a tie and, a, and an immaculate white shirt. You know, you have to, you know, present yourself as you know as a hero, as a well dressed hero. Mm. Yada yada yada. Um, and a couple I, of scenes, yeah. <laughs> and I, I did think the most interesting stuff was, um, you know, it, it's not very long, but like this kind of opening segment where. Yeah, he's about to go on trial, and then like hearing you know the witnesses and like uh, you know getting the verdict. That that to me I actually did think was pretty interesting, and compelling. It was just more, you know, the majority of the movie once I'm back at the house that I felt, yeah, you know, I, I lost more interest in. But mm. I, I did like this opening stuff. Uh, well, I'm not even at the course. I'm talking about the. Uh, There's a scene where he first hears the the weeping, and he gets mm -hmm. up out of bed. Uh, it's like the mm -hmm. night before the course stuff, and mm -hmm. there's a shot where he goes into the bathroom thinking that's where the sound's coming from and he has like a like a cabinet full of guns and stuff because of course he does <laughs> uh, and he's, he's, he walks into the bathroom but the, the way the shot's lined up is that you know the door to the bathroom and the door to his bedroom are kind of side by side so you can sort of see in both rooms at the same time and what i thought was really neat here is that he's in the well-lit bathroom and he's got the gun and he's really paranoid and nervous and he's like looking behind the shower curtain and he's trying to like see where this noise is coming from and he's really suspicious the entire time you're seeing that and the left hand side of the screen where you can see his bedroom on the chair, his suit with the tie and the white shirt that he's been told mm. to have is laid out on a on a chair for him the next morning, and I thought that was a really wonderful subtle little touch. It, it to me it was it was kind of like saying like okay so here's the facade of what he's presenting. It's the suit, the tie. Like I'm a hero. I'm a war hero. I'm not a criminal. This is what mm. I am. But he's actually like venturing outside of that into another. And I know it was just his bathroom, but like, I think symbolically the idea that he's leaving that behind because he's paranoid. Uh, it kind of sets up where, like, where his mind is for the rest of the movie. Uh, so it's those simple little visual things that I think add a lot of depth to everything that's going on, and it happens kind of throughout. You know, uh, yeah, I guess, yeah, honestly, I guess you're right. I I didn't really think that, uh, yeah, you know, him putting his clothes out on a chair <laughs> that a this is actually a great movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the subtlety of him getting dressed tomorrow. You're right. That is genius. Honestly. Can't think of any other movie that's done that. Wow. Good stuff. <laughs> You're such a <laughs> prick. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm trying to read the screen and look for symbolism. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Clint Howard's not in it, so there's no point in even talking about it, apparently. <laughs> I did notice there was a, a little, little bit of a lack of Clint in this yeah, movie. Yeah, yes, that, we can confirm. But I, I even think we have to give a spoiler warning. There is no Clint Howard, so if that's what you're looking for, look elsewhere. I think that's fair. <laughs> now, I love the courtroom stuff as well. I mean, you mentioned that. I, mm -hmm. I thought that was extremely compelling because it's, it's unclear exactly like what the war crimes are at first, and then so we hear this mm -hmm. testimony of this, uh, this uh, not even a witness, like a, a victim uh, from mm -hmm. from these war crimes. And it's pretty in the face. We'll probably get into that in more spoilers, but the that that well, again another little camera touch here is that when this 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 victim is telling her story and she's got this veil on, all the victims who are at the court mm -hmm. hearing all have these veils, and that's what the poster is. The poster is this sort of designed veil that they've got, but she's kind of speaking through the veil and as a translator because she's not speaking you know Spanish. She's speaking uh, I don't know what the language is if I'm honest, but <laughs> like she's speaking. I don't Guatemalan, I assume. Is that a language yeah. though? I'm not sure if that's actually. Um... Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm just yeah. again, yeah, assuming. Yes, whatever, it's whatever, from whatever one speaks in Guatemala is, is what she's yeah. speaking. Um, and the camera is, you know, gradually it starts off with a tense close up, and it's sort of just gradually tracking oh, actually, back. 
<laughs> yeah. Actually, you know what's kind of weird about that is like I did wonder uh, at first if something is wrong because yeah the person was speaking and I'm like why is there no subtitles and then the translator <laughs> speaks and then there's some, I was like oh okay yeah yeah uh, but the camera's pulling back and it's revealing the audience in the background but the camera always stays on this victim as she's telling her story and it always focuses on her and it really stuck out to me that when we get the dictator up for his statement and then he's like verdict or whatever the the camera never moves it's just static shot the entire time and i think even that symbolism right there of his worldview is fixed like there's no alterations there's no like like revealing there's no opening up there's no you know the idea mm-hmm. that this victim is opening up about the darkest experience she's ever went through and it's this really intense you know sensitive topic and she's revealing herself for everyone but when the camera's on him it's just still it's static and it's like no he's not budging he's not he's not like, dropping the facade of who he wants to claim to be and mm-hmm. it does cut with like shots of the the people at the hearing and cuts around the room and and all these mm-hmm. things i i thought it was very notable because it just it, it's, it's a very similar frame shot like when it cuts to him sitting there it's a very similar shot to say the middle of the tracking shot with the other person with the victim mm-hmm. but it doesn't move it doesn't go reveal more doesn't close in either it just stays there as if no this is fixed and this mm-hmm. is again it kind of visually gives you a cue for how he thinks about himself and the world and how he's refusing to understand or even accept that he might have done something wrong at any point uh so yeah <laughs> It's definitely not a good guy. Like, there's no. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I, I think, e- even though, like, you know, he's like a very old and like kind of feeble old man, and like you see, it seems like he has like health problems and stuff a lot of the time. Like, I don't think at any point in the movie do you ever like feel on his side <laughs> or anything. Like, you, you kind of like pretty much right away, you're like, yeah, I don't like this guy. <laughs> he's yeah, obviously he, a piece of shit. <laughs> he comes across, yeah, you get a sense of him, but then as soon as you hear the story of what happened, it's like, yeah, okay, this is yeah. <laughs> This is what it says. Uh, so no, I'll, I'll, you know, there's a couple of other moments I want to mention, but I'll save them for spoilers because uh, mm-hmm. uh, they are more a bit spoilery in the details. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, is there anything else you'd like to add uh, before we go into spoilers? <laughs> um, no, not not really. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's <laughs> I don't. Well, yeah, what can I say? Unfortunately, it didn't work for me. I was not the most pleased watching it <laughs> I, was, I was not the most pleased watching it put that in the box yeah. though. Uh, i needed to uh as soon as it was done i needed to throw on like a you know a, a, a later friday the 13th sequel or something to <laughs> wash the taste out <laughs> yeah I, I mean i i typically uh you know when i'm done with a movie I, I can't just start another one i have to at least stretch my legs for a bit and you know mm-hmm. whatever but not because the movie was good or bad, just because I don't know, I'm human. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, as much of a couch potato as I may appear to be, uh, I actually do feel the need to move around a little bit occasionally. <laughs> what, what is this weird bragging you I, I don't know. I don't know. All right, you move. Okay, great. I occasionally move. Yes. All right. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want a trophy or something? I just, <laughs> Most <want> to... moved. <laughs> I, I just I just want to make sure all the ladies know that I occasionally move. I think it's a very appealing part of my character. Oh, I think they know. <laughs> I think they know. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard you've been walking around a lot, going into shops and businesses, uh you know. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were going to some sort of punchline with that there, if it was just mm. Well, I think everyone is just visualizing you not wearing a mask when you're doing it. How dare you? <laughs> I do wear a mask. Hey, maybe I'm Michael Myers' mask, but no one said that it had to be like a traditional face mask. <laughs> That's true. That is true. <laughs> All the serial killers, they're having a ball right now. Everyone's supposed to wear a mask. Like, yeah, I've yeah. been here the whole time. <laughs> Although Jason's got all those little holes in it, so I don't know if that's, no, that's effective not the best one. right now. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right then. <laughs> we'll go out to spoilers. I'll take this time though to thank our Patreon producers at the time of recording. So thank you to Tyler Hess, Cindy Palisades, David Sharp, Bordnow, Al Tribesman, Christopher Moy, Brett Williams, and David Brown. They are patrons at twenty dollars or more on patreon.com slash mailfuzz TV where you can support us for as little as one dollar per month and get some bonuses for your trouble. Uh, as an exclusive extra episode, uh 
usually every month, uh, although it's gone on a little bit of a break as Tim's gone on paternity leave. Uh, mm. So it's kind of off right now, but it should be back soon uh, in the spring. So, because I'm just remembered as... Oh, that's, that's one's going out in November, so this one will be out quite early. So, okay. But, mm. but the other episode we're recording today after this isn't going out until March, so I'm just sort of like trying to keep my mind right on like, where are we when the audience is seeing this? It's mm-hmm. a great question. In terms of time. Where are we? <laughs> <laughs> where, are, where are all of we? Uh, mm. So yeah, go to Patreon, but uh, so you know there are, there'll be other things uh, going on there uh, mm. over those months uh, to hopefully make up for that. But of course, at the five dollar tier, you get early access to episodes by a day, and you get bonuses for other shows that we do on Mail Plus TV. Uh, it is worth mentioning if you want to support us, uh, you know, uh, on on the YouTube's and all that, you can hit the like button. Mm. It's also super helpful. Um, and don't worry if you are just giving one dollar because one dollar is actually more than we would make if you watched every piece mm. of content we did on YouTube. So. Uh, never, <laughs> never, <laughs> never feel bad about that. Uh, so yeah, one dollar is fine. If anything under that, though, just what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know if Tim knows that you physically can't go under that, but <laughs> <laughs> I think we have some uh, twenty-five cent patrons. <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they someone sending me quarters in the mail. I don't know. <laughs> I might want to check this for uh, Anthrax, Tim. I'll just uh, <laughs> put that out there. Uh, also, also, what have I told you about giving audience members your home address? Like, it's nothing. <laughs> just asking for trouble. It's friendly. <laughs> okay. Full spoilers for La Llorona mm. from this point on. Um, so, uh, unlike Tim, I quite enjoyed most of this film. So, uh, which is good because I can I can sort of dive into it. We mentioned the court case, of course, at the start. He's we... found guilty, so he is technically found guilty. Although mm-hmm. it seems to be kind of loosely reversed uh, after he gets sick and goes to the hospital. Uh, that's why there's protests outside his house. Um, but he's basically like under like I guess house arrest. Yeah, kind, kind of. of or... Yeah. Um, but no, we hear this this you know heart aching story from this woman about uh the soldiers like just murdering and raping and, you know, butchering children and all, all these awful things. And, you know, we hear the, the the company line, which is, no, 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 only militias were hurt, only, you know, enemies of the state were killed. There was never anything unjust like this. Um, yeah. And the, the key thing here throughout all this, of course, is the other characters. Because as much as we say it focuses on the old man, mm-hmm. it, it very much is about, you know, his wife, who is kind of the most jaded and actually is kind of like convinced herself that he's done nothing wrong. And she, you know, she talks, you know, she's, when, when, you know, when the daughter, you know, the sort of the middle-aged woman sort of says, like, you know, what, did he ever actually tell you what he did? Like, you know, do mm-hmm. we know what he did? And she's like, what, when did you become a lefty? She gets, like, you know, really pompous yeah. and, like, you know, <laughs> arrogant and right-winged and, you Yeah, know. like, the, uh, yeah, the, the wife character, yeah, she doesn't come a- across great either, but the, yeah, like, the, the daughter does seem like, um... You know a little more sympathetic and it is kind of an interesting uh you know angle because you know especially nowadays you know we hear so many stories about awful people all the time and you know it is uh you know kind of interesting to think of like oh yeah they do have families though and like you know and <laughs> i think a lot of times you know it seems like the you know family is just as bad too but you know it is kind of interesting to see like when you know like so many people are like you know think you're a monster how does that affect the people that you know are know you as like a dad or whatever yeah well i think the movie goes into what it goes into here with these characters though is that i think the idea with the the wife is that she is pretty bad at first and she feels a little mm-hmm. bit racist she feels like she's you know this uptight uh thinks her husband's innocent but as the movie goes on and you know she talks about how yeah you, you, your dad did kind of like you know have affairs and you know, he's yeah. a man, and these these whores. You know, that's the word she uses. You know, she uses the word savages a lot when she's talking about, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the other people, and she she gets really like in this way. But as the movie goes on, you get the sense that the 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 feeling she's like sort of like she's basically like convinced herself of all this, and this is how she feels to kind of like mm-hmm. essentially, I don't know, make herself feel better about her awful husband and her, you know, and <laughs> who she is and who he is. This idea that you know the, the head servant is this woman who is probably actually his like daughter from like an affair, and yeah. that's something that sort of brought up like halfway through the movie, and she's kind of like at peace with it, but she keeps having these nightmares where she's sort of living through the experience of what one of what one of her husband's victims went through, 
And, you know, I, I think it's kind of important that at the end of the film, when they kind of, like, do this ritual to, like, you know, send the ghosts away, she's kind of the mm-hmm. one who, like, kills her husband. Like, she's the one who finally kind of, like, essentially comes to terms with she she's suppressed so much and she's changed and become mm-hmm. this awful person to kind of justify being around them. And I think that's kind of, like, really get this kind of transitional thing between these other female characters where the wife is this jaded person who at first seems like she's pretty awful and just as bad as he is but over the course she kind of mm-hmm. realizes that she's become that because of him and then True. the daughter mm-hmm. is a bit more reserved but clearly is like having suspicions and is, feels like empathetic to all these victims when she hears the stories she hears the lies on tv about what they're claiming happened she mm-hmm. it clearly bothers her and then you have the granddaughter her daughter who is like the most innocent and the one who just immediately hears like these bad things and goes wait did grandpa do these things and she's immediately looking yeah. disgusted <laughs> by it so yeah. I, I i think that's kind of the importance of the age differences between them is that mm-hmm. the oldest one who's been with them the longest is kind of like almost being convinced and gaslighted enough into like this is normal mm-hmm. this is okay this is who we are and all these other people are all being fools and they're ungrateful for for challenging anything mm-hmm. he's ever said and then it kind yeah. of like you know it gets better through the generations so i i think that's very much the point and so the fact yeah. that the movie ends with all three well i say all three all four because then you have the you know the half sister the uh, the other lady like all four <laughs> of them are together um and like combat in the spirit at the end um and they're all at his funeral at the end kind of all equally as well because there's just a shot from behind yeah. where the four of them it's, are lined up yeah, it's just like that scene in a uh, avengers where <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Captain. <laughs> all the female superheroes come together. <laughs> but I, I think because I think part of the, the the feminist side of this film is the idea that this one awful man has basically had this horrible effect in every single woman in his life, and them casting him out at the end of the movie is like made all of their lives better, and they all feel like they're strong and independent at the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I, I think that's kind of you know a big part of what this movie's doing. Uh, I mean, it yeah, is dealing with the, is, war, the war crimes. Yeah. It's, it's dealing with these serious sort of real life things that it's incorporating. But I do think the main like backbone of the movie is the feminist side of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> See, Tim wants to make a stupid That's joke, good. but I just made a really good, really <laughs> thoughtful point about a really serious issue, and he knows that he can't just go into a dumb joke too quickly because it will sound insensitive. <laughs> so he's trying I, to stall for a minute. <laughs> I was thinking about making a joke about saying like, uh, like, oh, that's why I didn't like the movie, all this <laughs> feminism stuff. But then, oh, oh, oh. yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh... yeah, people. Uh, <laughs> I think most people know us on the show, but if you don't know us, they might <laughs> think I was being real. So, <laughs> yeah, you may want to refrain from uh, <laughs> such jokes. Yes, but no, no, no. I, I agree with what you said though. That that stuff is all like very good and. Um, yeah, that's a good aspect <laughs> to it. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. <laughs> so, um, the actual creepy stuff, though. So we have the scene early on where he like gets up and like hears the noise. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very well shot, and he, even that scene is really good because it ends with him like almost shooting his wife because he's so mm-hmm. like paranoid and tense, and he's walking through the house with a gun that he just turns and opens fire. And they kind of have to, like, grab him and disarm him. There's, like, a head of security guy who's, like, always around who kind of has to come in and, like, take it out of his hands. And we kind of get this idea that... I, I suppose the representation is, is that him getting old and kind of senile and, and doing these these wacky things is... Like, it's almost like a metaphor for, like, how he's always been kind of this chaotic element in their lives that they all mm-hmm. have to, like, revolve around. But over the course of the film, it's this one of my favourite scenes in the movie, actually, is... After he gets out of hospital, which again kind of indicates the type of person he is, because he kind of flirts with the nurse a little bit, um, and it feels a little bit icky. But he's mm-hmm. in the the ambulance, and his daughter and granddaughter and wife are with them, and the head security is there, and he's talking about how okay, when we may arrive at the house because they're going home. Mm-hmm. Like there's there's a there's a protest, so we're going to put a bulletproof vest on, and we're going to get through. Just you know, get to the house. Don't stop and talk to anyone. Just go there. And the entire thing is in one shot where the camera's just kind of like, you know, bouncing around the various characters. And some of my favorite moments in this uh, are, there's a moment where, uh, you know, the daughter, uh, you know, the middle-aged daughter that is, not the, the granddaughter, <laughs> let me just get her name, and Natalia. When Natalia sort of notices, like, one of the security guards next to her putting on, like, a helmet, like a riot helmet, <laughs> she kind of just has this look in her eye where she's like, wait, the, what the hell? <laughs> like, that, what, what are we doing here? <laughs> 
And then there's a moment where, like, the... I, I, I thought this was very effective, because we just stay in the van the whole time, or the ambulance the whole time, but you start to hear all the banging on the side of the the the, 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 the ambulance. You start to hear all the protesters banging against it. And there's just, how, mm-hmm. there's just this, like, tor- torrent of, like, noise and banging and screams. And I thought all this was effectively shot. And it, it felt like a horror movie scene, despite the fact that really there's nothing in the scene itself that is horror-esque it's just it's the scariness of wait what is our life what is this uh what are we living in now um and just like the entire time natalia's getting more worried and worried as as she sort of realizes like the world they're living in now and what this life is like and the and the Mm -hmm. entire time uh you know he you know the 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 dictator is just lying in the, the 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 bed just the stretcher just not caring he's just so nonchalant about the whole thing he doesn't care mm-hmm. it's just this thing and then the actual trip to the house is quite tense as there's like things being thrown at them and it's it mm-hmm. feels quite visceral and all the rest but i thought that was very well it was scenes like this that really won me over and really drew me into the movie um if i have a complaint about the film it's probably the last third when it does introduce the supernatural stuff which i hinted at earlier it kind of seems mm-hmm. to do it very very quickly where all of a sudden all the characters seem to like be seeing lots of ghosts in a way that mm. up until that point it was very subtle and nothing was like you know characters weren't seeing spooky things and being frightened ex- with the exception of the dictator um because you know the, 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 this mysterious new woman appears saying that she's the new maid mm-hmm. uh nindalma and they let her in and we hear that she had two children who died already and of course this ties into the the whole la Llorona, you know mythology the curse all the rest of it but she, uh, like, you know, we start to see the dictator, like, staring at her when she's, like, you know, cleaning it around the pool area. And uh, the mm-hmm. wife notices this. And then we, we see him, you know, just watch her here or there. One of the big scenes of the movie is that he actually gets up in the middle of the night to go and kind of spy on her when she's in, like, the water. And he follows her back mm-hmm. into where she's having a bath. And she's, like, sitting there naked. And it's mm-hmm. this thing where he's being very creepy and pervy. In fact, one of the creepiest shots of this whole movie and despite the fact that this is about him, like, sort of being a perv, the entire thing is shot in a really creepy <clears> way, <throat> I thought. Like, the, the cinematographer of this entire scene feels like a horror movie scene. But mm-hmm. the, probably the creepiest moment of the whole thing is just the way he's smiling at her. And it's just <laughs> this really nasty kind of, you know, pervy old man thing. Yeah. Um, but then when someone else turns a light on and catches him, hmm. uh, Alma screams as if she's been spied on, and the rest of them have to come in and, like, take him out. And, you know, like... <laughs> Natalia's mortified that her father's like this, and it's, it's like she's learning who her father is, like, properly for the first time. Mm-hmm. And, and then, yeah. And then, like, the, the wife is, like, just all business about mm-hmm. it. Like, you know, she's just like, yeah, I've been through this before. And then it's like, you know, make sure that, you know, she's like, starts giving orders, like, oh, yeah, make sure, you know, he, he's not alone and make sure, like, you, like, uh, you know, cover up and don't wear these clothes and stuff. And it's, uh, yeah, the, the that was like an interesting scene. Um, like they, they did do like they do a good job of like the, yeah, you know, like w- with like the music and everything. It is like very creepy, and you kind of feel the tension rising. But I don't know. For for me, it just ultimately kind of falls flat because it's just like I don't know. <laughs> like I feel like nothing happens. Like it's just <laughs> you know, I, it's like okay, it seems like something creepy is about to go on, and then it's just like oh, and then. Nothing. Well, I, I think that's what's effective to me about it is that ultimately mm-hmm. it builds up, but then the actual creepy scare part of it is actually just what he was doing and what he was about to do mm-hmm. or what he's trying to do. It's the sure. it's the real world part that's the scary thing. The actual uh, your own a curse part isn't mm-hmm. even that creepy, and it's not. I don't think it's supposed to be because he deserves this. Because that's one of the things is that the yeah. wife starts having these nightmares, and it turns out it's quite it's pretty clear that she's basically just living what this Alma went through. Because Alma is this woman that he killed back in 1982 or whatever, mm-hmm. and. He, he had, like, her children drowned so that she would speak and, like, give up the, the gorilla's location. But, of course, mm-hmm. she doesn't know anything. She's innocent. Um, so that's why there's this, this revenge happening now. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's, it's, this thing, it's almost like she's there to, like, show the rest of his family who he is so that they'll all kind of, like, break free of him. Um, mm-hmm. So there is kind of an empowering element to this. Uh, but I think it's probably the weakest part of the movie is after this point where... Like, they do start seeing, like, ghosts coming towards the house, and it very quickly becomes them, like, doing this this ritual. And the, the movie does set up early, because the very first shot of the movie is the wife doing, like, a sort of little little uh, incantation. It, and it doesn't really talk about it much, but the idea that she is kind of spiritual and she does do little things like this. But at the start of the movie, she's just doing it sort of as a protection thing for her husband. Um, mm-hmm. At the end of the movie, of course, she's doing this to, like, sort of get rid of the spirits. But she... 
she you know, jumps on top of him and strangles him and it's kind of this uh you know cathartic like she's finally kind of like letting her rage out at him she stopped forgiving for him she stopped making excuses for him and it's this you know this thing and um the end of the movie is just that like his like you know his comrades the, the people who were also guilty alongside of him they start to hear weeping as well um in the bathroom at his funeral so that that, that kind of mm-hmm. you know it's, it's just this idea that she's going to go out you know hunt the rest of them now too but um hell yeah I don't think, yeah, I don't really think it's about uh, them, though. I, I think it's it's about how he and how awful he is has affected everyone else around him and how he's corrupted some of them, uh, how he's made some of them unsafe and about their, like, guilt for basically enabling them and, like, protecting them and them finally breaking sure. free of that. I think that's what the movie's really about, ultimately. Mm. Um, and I think on those strengths, it does really well. Now, admittedly, like, as much as I think it's really well shot as a horror movie is it much of a horror movie and why i like it what i like about it is it a horror movie i think it kind of is in a very sort of real world sense mm-hmm. like everything that every all, all these topics that it's hitting that and what he's done in his past and the idea of like it really treats his impact in them like it is a horror movie thing like like his mm-hmm. impact in them is kind of terrific and terrifying and that, that's how it treats it yeah totally and I, I do think that like especially now it feels like something that is kind of like relevant to our times because it feels like you know part of it is about um revealing these bad people and mm-hmm. you know uh holding them accountable for their crimes you know versus like you know just unquestioningly following your leaders and you know just believing you know whatever they say or what you read in the newspapers it's like Oh no, like I I do like that aspect of it where it is like you know e- even though his crime was like you don't know like a like a you know a while ago uh, but it is still like um yeah no like we have to hold these horrible people you know accountable for what they did so you know there's that aspect of it which is nice. Yeah, and plus you know you, you see throughout the film that he's not changed. Like he's clearly right, yeah. you know the whole time because that, that's the other thing when Alma first shows up the security guard's not going to let her in. But it's him who sees her from the balcony and says, let her in. Like, and it's like, he even just lets her in because he's like, yeah, I fancy a bit of this. <laughs> like, basically. <laughs> that, that's, that's why she gets let in the house. It's yeah. his, his own, uh, you know, perverted horniness, horniness yeah, that, 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 that lets her in in the first place. Um, you know, it, so I, 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 I think I really appreciate all that. And as you were talking there about, like, comparing it to the real world, all, all I could think was, is like, is, it, is this how we're going to, you know, in a few years' time, we're going to hear about Ivanka just, you know, strangling. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> just one night. Uh, I don't know. Uh, th- th- yeah. th- th- you know, th- consider the thoughts. But, um, <laughs> now, I, I think it's a really strong movie and what it's doing. I think it's got a really strong focus. And because of that, I, you know, I like this quite a bit and I like it a lot more than a lot of the generic horror that we watch where it's just kind of okay or, sure. or if not outright bad, like like the other La Llorona yeah. movie was. Like, that was just terrible. Um, yeah. I think this is a very solidly directed movie, and I'd be very intrigued to see what this director goes on to do. Whether it is a horror next or not, like it doesn't really matter to me. I think the strengths that are here are are from a character and a storytelling perspective. Sure. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I'm making fun of it a little bit, but again, like I can't make fun of it like the same way I can make fun of like The Prodigy <laughs> or you know something like that, where which is just you know annoyingly generic and doing the same dumb tropes um yeah no i mean i i, I wish i liked this movie better but like it's I, I, again it's just like a lot of the stuff that, you, that you're talking about are you know the very interesting aspects of the movie and you know i like that it's there and that it actually does have depth and weight you know versus like a lot of the dumb <laughs> movies we review um but yeah i mean at the same time unfortunately uh the, the actual act of watching it um just it <laughs> wasn't a, a, as well done uh for me but i mean i i think it, it's like I, I depending on the person though i could definitely see like recommending this like i think it's um you know something that you kind of want to know what you're getting into <laughs> before you watch it like if you're just like all right let me see something creepy on shutter you know maybe <laughs> you, you don't want to you know go to this right like right away but if you you know are interested in like you know stuff that maybe has more of a you know real world focus and um you know has some of those kind of like more 
you know like heavier topics and, and stuff and that and it's not like a you know full-on scary ghost movie like yeah i can yeah see like people digging this but mm. hey ho i want to point out that a minute ago you said the sentence the act actual act of watching it wasn't well done <laughs> and all i could all i could think was but you're the one watching it so isn't that you cr- criticizing yourself for not watching it <laughs> properly <laughs> <laughs> I, I just meant when, uh, you know, when I watched it, I just, I didn't have a great time. That's what I was yeah. trying to say. <laughs> I, I think I you got know the, what I mean. I think I got that, but it was just funny the way you said it. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't I, have my glasses on when I watched it, so. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 actually, what, what, probably the biggest scene that we've not mentioned that uh, people will probably think is weird if we don't mention uh, is the, the scene where scene? he, the pill scene, yeah, uh-huh. where he almost, like, where he, he actually does shoot his granddaughter. Because yeah. he he basically gets to the point where he thinks that you know he's convinced that she is like a spirit or a like something to come get him, and he like starts firing into the water, and mm-hmm. it's uh, actually the granddaughter who's in there, and he he grazes her arm with the, with the bullet. And this is interesting because the it's the a, it's the point that his daughter Natalia actually takes the gun off him and points it back at him, but she's completely flipped at this point where she's not even going to try and protect him, and obviously the final. You know, the idea again of it going back up the generational chain is that it has to end with the wife who ultimately rejects him, you know, mm. at the end. Um but that's actually one of the recurring things throughout the movie is that Alma's like trying to teach uh the granddaughter how to hold her breath mm-hmm. underwater. And of course we all know about you know, if you if you know anything about La Llorona, you know about the kids drowning, that it feels mm-hmm. quite sinister. Like, is she trying to like, ultimately drown her? Is that the point of this? Or is it? It's, but, but you know, it, it seems to be more symbolic, and it's more about like this is what he did to my children, and um, yeah. So, so the act, the fact that he almost shot his own granddaughter when she was underwater, you know, felt like he almost repeated the crime, even if by some kind of accident. Uh, whether yeah. or not Alma was intentionally wanting him to succeed in doing that to like make a point, or or not, is maybe debatable. But uh you know, it's a big sequence and it's, it's kind of like again it's, it's kind of the more the real world side of it as opposed to the, the the spooky supernatural side of it but um no i think it's very good and you know i'm going to ask tim for his rating here and i feel mm-hmm. like he's going to be very harsh <laughs> and upset me but that's okay uh yeah i i mean i i'm not gonna like you know go super low but like uh, I, I mean, unfortunately, I can't go that high either. Um, you know, again, I, you know, do just want to point out that, you know, it's the movie looks really good. The performances are great. Um, and e- even if it doesn't work with me, I, I still admire it more for being, you know, about something uh, again, instead of just, you know, something dumb and tropey that we've seen a million times before. Um, but yeah, I'm so, uh, uh, so I think like on a technical level, there's good aspects of it. But uh, again, it on an enjoyment level, I, I didn't like it too much. So I think I'm gonna give it a uh, a four. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Tim. Especially, I mean, Tim, what? I didn't watch it properly. <laughs> Put it on the box. <laughs> sure, sure. Hey, blame me if you want. That's that's fine. Everyone does. <laughs> I'm not blaming you. You blame Jew. I, I, I am just <laughs> giving you the quote back that you said. <laughs> um, no, nah. I mean I just think you're being a bit harsh, but like you know, fair enough. It didn't work for you. It didn't work for you. Um, I'm definitely going higher. I, I I am happy to give this a. I'm going to go with a seven point five. I I think mm. I, I'd maybe be tempted to actually stretch into that eight because I do think a lot of this is really strong, and I was super into it early on. I do think in the back half. Once the actual supernatural stuff becomes a bit more a part of the story, it feels like it kind of just goes into it with it, without the characters even kind of really acknowledging they've went into supernatural territory, which is kind of weird. So mm-hmm. I thought that was a bit jarring to me, but I do love the themes and I love everything that builds up to it before that and kind of the point of the ending I like a lot. Um, I, I think, you know, the, the shot of them all at the funeral, like side by side, with, with you know, the, the, the head maid uh, who turned, you know, is the illegitimate daughter. Mm-hmm. Like, them all being sort of equal, on equal footing and kind of, like, united, um, you know, free of him at last is, you know, I think a wonderful uh, moment, a wonderful idea. Uh, so 7.5 for me, I think it's really good. Well, if you want a slow burn horror drama, I would say this is, this is good stuff. So... <laughs> Ignore Tim, basically, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> this is the gist of it. <laughs> sure. 
<laughs> Everyone does. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll see who's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you made it this far into the review, put the word dictator into the comments on YouTube mm. to let us know you made it here. And I'm going to make Tim do his pose for the thumbnail. So here we go. Three, two, one. Pose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's something in there uh, <laughs> that I can use. I mean, there's only so many poses you can do, like, just sitting in a chair, you know? <laughs> I, I, I know, I know. That's why sometimes we bring in a prop if you, if you think of something in advance. I don't know if you have anything for this one. particular. Maybe a veil. I didn't, yeah, veil. unfortunately I left my oxygen tank in the <laughs> other room. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's, sometimes there's props, though. Sometimes you could have a prop. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm saying step up your game, Tim. You're letting us down here with these shoddy thumbnail don't, poses don't give me notes on air <laughs> so I'm unprofessional what, what the act of watching movies do it better and have better poses there you go uh, ay, ay, ay. <laughs> I can't wait till you get back to the leprechaun movies oh uh, <laughs> god alright oh, I Oh, oh, and the hood was so bad. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, what would I do now? Oh, yes. Uh, but <laughs> please like and subscribe and all those things. And it's uh, very important. And, you know, uh, super, super, super easy. Patreon.com slash TV. If you want to do, you know, financial support and get some bonuses, go over there. We mentioned that earlier. Uh, of course, catch us on Twitter at Streams Midnight for updates and weird jokes from Tim and whatever else happens over there <laughs> uh but that is that is pretty much us that has been screams after a minute this has been the oh, you almost said the curse of la llorona this has been la llorona <laughs> the movie which you can find on shudder uh for your mm -hmm. subscription uh which i actually I, I tried to leave shudder uh this past week not right mm -hmm. now but the idea that my subscription was running out like sort of mid to late november uh, you know obviously mm -hmm. by the time this goes out it might be then but uh and they said please have a free month and stay with us i'm like okay sure yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, you're no, gonna, if you're gonna give me a free month i'll stay <laughs> sure yeah yeah they, they're usually pretty good with that because i think um i i've had it for a while now i think there was like one time when i was trying to save money that like i i left for like a little bit and yeah it was like the same thing they were instantly like hey you want a free month and i was like well i can't can't argue with that <laughs> sure sure i'll take a free month uh but there you go that is uh la llorona so yeah thank you very much once again for watching and listening we always appreciate it Keep watching scary movies and we will see you next time.